Hello and welcome everyone. So here's another video where I'm comparing Google's Bard, which I've got in my left tab, and then ChatGPT uh, in terms of answering economic specific questions. I mean, like one goal would be to think about firstly, like would Bard or ChatGPT be a good uh, tool for studying, uh, for assisting with studying or, or whatever? Would, would this uh, current version, the, kid, the current uh, iteration of Bard and then or ChatGPT be a study a good study partner. So let's see, I'll start off. Uh, I want to ask some game theory questions. So uh, I'll say, can you generate and solve an example of the prisoner's dilemma game? And I didn't, I didn't specify if this is specifically for economics or game theory or whatever. I just want to see what it's going to do kind of right out of the box. And so I gave the exact same question to both to uh, Bard on the left here first, and then to ChatGPT, let's see what it'll say. So it says, sure, here's an example of Prisoner's Dilemma game, two prisoners, A and B, payoffs. If both confess, they'll be jailed for 15 years. If they don't confess, each will be jailed for two years. If only one confesses, whoever confesses will be released, the other will be jailed for two, 20 years. Okay, so the way that I think of this payoff matrix, let's see what it does, is you have uh, two players, whatever it be, row and column player, A and B. They have two strategies, confess or not confess, or I don't know, usually it's like confess or defect. So it'll be, CC is gonna be what, minus 15, right? Uh, DD is gonna be minus two, and then one will be released, so it'd be like uh, zero comma minus 20, right? And so let's see if it does that. Well, okay, so it's gonna say how many years, which is, these are, you know, how many, these are prison sentences, and so uh, first, Firstly, this is not a very good prisoner. This is not a very good payoff matrix. Um, not a good, like two by two matrix is kind of how we think about this. Also here, like additional, the larger number is worse. And so this is a little bit counterintuitive for how they've done this. Although it is relatively consistent with how the original uh, framing of the prisoner's dilemma game was. Okay, so they, they made a prisoner's dilemma game. Let's see if they can come up with the solution. So it says the best outcome is if they both do not confess. Yeah, that's right. This That will be for their game, though they didn't represent it great. Uh, that, that is the Nash equilibrium for their game. And they did get the payoffs right. So they did actually generate a prisoner's dilemma. So that's good. It's a classic example of a non-cooperative game. Yep. Players can't make binding agreements with each other. That's right. So any type of communication outside the game, it's just like cheap talk. It's not useful. I don't know. So... Other things equal, they came up with a game. They didn't represent it particular, particularly well. They didn't motivate why the solution was what the solution is. So that might be a follow-up question, but I wanna ask the same question of both. So let's see what ChatGPT says. ChatGPT says, uh, all right, so here's a solution. Two individuals, Alice and Bob, that's like A and B. Uh, both remain silent. Each receives a sentence of one year. If one remains silent or the other confesses, then they receive a sentence of 10 years and the other one will, whoever, whoever, uh, let's see, Anne remains, how are they doing this? So parentheses is the second player. It would be what I would imagine. So Bob defects and remains silent. Bob confesses defects. No, they're saying, I don't know. Let's think exactly how they're trying to frame this. Uh, all right. I don't know. So I'm getting confused by what they say, but let's just do this for both of them. Can you um, model your game in matrix form? Can you model your game in matrix form? Let's see. Taking a while to think. This is not bad. Let's see. So one year Wait a second, or their payoffs. The sentence was one year, so one year is uh, one year is better than ten years. So ten, yeah, okay. So ten years. So if we're solving this thing, uh, if Bob cooperates, Alice wants to defect because zero years is better than one year. If Bob defects, Alice wants to also defect because five years is better than five, than ten years. And then uh, similarly, yeah. So this. This is a good matrix. This works. This is this is a prisoner's dilemma. It's a prisoner's dilemma because both will have a dominant strategy to defect and the socially optimal outcome. So if we sum up their payoffs, 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 0 is 10, 1 plus 1 is 2. Jointly between them, they serve the fewest years if they both cooperate. So 
Uh, but the problem is they don't reach this in equilibrium because they each have an individually uh, individual strategy, individual incentive to defect. Okay, so this is good. This is pretty good. This is a prisoner's dilemma. And what did they say for the solution? They said, that, so they analyze, analyze it. This is pretty good. This is almost looking, so this is not perfect, but it looks like they're doing something close to best response reasoning. Uh, I just want to see if I can get it to it just come kind of straight out and give me the solution. So what is the Nash equilibrium for your game? And then hopefully it'll come out and say it's defect defect with payoffs of uh, payoffs of what was it five five and then what was Spard gonna do? Uh, oh, this is way worse. <laughs> That's just a mess. So let's just ask if it can at least remind itself that it's got the Nash equilibria. So it's talking about what a Nash equilibria is. This is like why would you tell me this? Why don't you just give me the actual Nash equilibria? So it's for both players to confess. Let's see. Was that right? So confess, confess, payoff was 15. Uh, wait, if they both confess, they'll be jailed for 15 years. If they did not confess, 20, yeah, I think that is right though. I think they actually are correct. I, they didn't give a good reasoning for it. I don't know. So at the, at the end of the day, Bard continues to be kind of a frustrating study partner for economics concepts. Uh, ChatGPT actually gave, like it actually modeled a model prisoner's dilemma gave us a matrix that we can actually recognize or interpret as a, as a solution or as a standard uh, normal form game. And then we can find the solution relatively, um, relatively intuitively. The form that Bard gave us this firstly, this is just a mess. I don't, it doesn't know what it's doing. And let's see, can you, can you report your game in two by two matrix format. Let's see if I'll give it one more chance. Let's see. I don't know, not holding out great hope. Uh, but I mean, this is fascinating because ChatGPT actually could generate a prisoner's dilemma and, and give you the solutions. You could work on, you know, you could you could ask it to generate a Nash or ask you to generate a normal form game, matrix game, because this is a legitimate matrix game. Then you could solve it on your own and then you could check to see ChatGPT's answer, its solution. It's not gonna walk through all the steps like we would with best response reasoning, but it gave, at least here, it gave a good gave a good response. Yeah, this thing is, that's not right. That's, is this a two by two matrix? <laughs> so uh, Bard thinks this is a two by two matrix. No, that is not. Okay, anyway, so uh, at the end of the day, I'd say probably the better study partner for game theory, at least for Prisoner's Dilemma, who knows? We, we haven't, ex we haven't, explored the range of its game theory competency, but at least for what we did, looks like ChatGPT is a little bit better uh, econ study partner. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, include here.